Could the Denver Broncos go on a big-time second-half run led by Russell Wilson? The offense will have to play much better. What are some of the things that they can do to be better and to help out the defense going forward for the remainder of the season against some tough opponents? We dive into that and much more in today's brand-new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome into a brand new episode of Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team, every day. Thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country for tuning in and making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day, every single day, free and available everywhere you get your podcast in audio format, or whether you're watching on YouTube, do us a favor, hit that subscribe or that follow button down below so you never miss out on a day's worth of Denver Broncos news, content, coverage, and more every single day. All year long from the South Stands to the end zone. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter for Mile High Sports. Joined alongside, as always, by my co-host, Sarah Bettinger, site expert, predominantly orange.com. Sarah, the big question here. This NFL season has shown us that we can expect the unexpected. Nobody expected the Broncos to be at 3-5 and five going into the bye week. Now they're coming out of the bye week, and nobody expects this Broncos football team to have a chance to go on a run. But, as we've seen in the NFL, anything is possible. That's right. Anything's possible. Anything goes. It feels like, you know, whatever you could dream up is kind of on the table for this NFL season, expecting the unexpected on a week to week basis. And really, I guess if we're going by expecting the unexpected, really nobody's going to be expecting the Broncos to be one of those teams that goes on a big second half run here, Cody, after the offensive output we saw in the first half of the season. I guess you can't really blame anybody for having low expectations at this point but at the same time let's just say I mean kid if Russell Wilson can get this Broncos offense going even just a little bit even just creeping into that top 20 range let's start with a clean slate here let's say from week you know week 10 on to the end of the season what is the Broncos offense going to rank if they can get it into the top 20 top half of the NFL Russell Wilson is going to be a catalyst for that, Cody, and I think that makes a run, a big run in the second half, very possible. And look, I think everyone can be very open about this. Russ and the Broncos offense has not performed the way that anybody had expected, right? But can they turn things around is a huge question. It's not out of the realm of possibility, though I understand Broncos fans' skepticism when people say, hey, could they do it? Because the Broncos haven't shown us much that they can do it. They haven't given Broncos fans much inclination to say, okay, hey, you know what? It's possible. But that is up to Russell Wilson and Nathaniel Hackett to come out and help lead the charge. And, you know, Russ has to be consistently better, but there's some things that he can do. And I know we'll dive a little bit deeper into some of the action-based items that the offense can do to help take that pressure off of Russell Wilson, but more so how Russ can play even better. I think there's so many different factors that have impacted this offense outside of a first-year head coach who's calling plays and is trying to balance both roles where it simply has not been efficient. It has not been ideal to the point where I think we are all saying, hey, relief, play calling duties to somebody else and just manage the team. That's one thing that we'll see if Nathaniel Hackett makes any changes coming into Titans week here. But I think one thing is for certain, right now sitting at 3-5, and five, Sarah, the optics don't look great for the Broncos. Their room for error is very, very minimal at this point, to the point where I feel like they can't afford to lose more than two games. But when you factor in the opponents like the Kansas City Chiefs twice, the Carolina Panthers, the Las Vegas Raiders, Los Angeles Chargers, Los Angeles Rams at this point, oh, and not to mention the Arizona Cardinals and the Tennessee Titans, and Baltimore Ravens, Lamar Jackson, that is a tough tough stretch to expect this team to really run the table but as we said anything is possible here sir these next three games I look at it you open up with Tennessee which you know they're a very good football team I still feel like it is a winnable game for the Broncos the Las Vegas Raiders choked a 17 point lead against the Jaguars this past week you play them next week that's a variable winnable game at home as well and then you're on the road at the Carolina Panthers you start off the season with three very winnable games before you place you know the Kansas City Chiefs in a primetime showdown there if Denver can win these next three games and go into that matchup at six and five, I mean, Sarah, I feel like the momentum, the narratives that we were hearing that we are talking about are entirely different for this Broncos team. It's going to be huge because really the second half of the season is where a lot of people were worried about the Broncos schedule, but it does open up 
pretty favorable to the Broncos, right? Pretty favorable to the second half run that we're talking about. Like you mentioned, you got the Titans coming out of the bye, then the Raiders and the Panthers. Those are all three very winnable games, especially the way those teams have been playing of late. It's going to be on the Broncos to go out there and execute, right? We we thought that the first you know three, four games of the season, there's no way the Broncos are going to be anything but three and one. And we saw how that kind of worked out there. So it's just one of these situations where on paper, the Broncos do have a good shot of winning. The key, Cody, is going to be Nathaniel Hackett and Russell Wilson. Can they do the little things well? Because if they can, it's a clean slate for everybody, right? You're coming out of the bye week. you got an opportunity to show the NFL world and really prove to yourselves that this thing can work. If they could do the little things well, I think they can go on this run that we're talking about. It's great that you point that out because the little things have not gone well for this Broncos team, right? So as easy it is to say, hey, they're going to do this to do this. They can fix this by doing this. We'll actually see if they put things together. We'll see if they graduate from some of the concepts that a lot of people have been hammering them about, about not doing well that high school teams run. There's a lot of noise here from the national media, but the Broncos and Russell Wilson and Nathaniel Hackett, they can silence some of that if they could come out and get off to a hot start here in the second half of the season. Broncos country coming up here in just a moment. Sarah and I, one thing we are going to do, we're going to dive a little bit deeper in some of the action-based items that the Broncos can do on offense to be better, to be in the top 15, top 20 range to help the defense out. We'll dive into that coming up here in just a moment, but before we do that, let me tell you about Prize Picks, the sponsor of today's episode. Lockdown Broncos Prize Picks is daily fantasy sports done right. With the Prize Picks app, you choose two to five players that you're focused on heading into the week, and these players will have a projection that's set by Prize Picks, and you simply choose whether or not they will have more or less in their prize picks projection, which could allow you to win 10 times your money on any entry. There's no competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections that are available. So download the prize picks app or go to pricepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, prize picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, prize picks will give you $50. Don't forget to enter the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. What are some of the things that this Denver Broncos offense can do to be more efficient and put a defense in a better position in the second half of the season against some tough opponents? Thank you so much, Broncos country, for tuning in and making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. We appreciate you so much. Get in the conversation whether you're watching on YouTube or you can tweet us on Twitter at Cody Work NFL, at Sarah Bettinger at Lockdown Broncos. Sarah, I mean, let, let's take a look at this Broncos offense, some action-based items. You and I touched on it in the last segment. Russell Wilson, Nathaniel Hackett have to be better. And I think it's easy to say everything will start with Russell Wilson, but there's so many different pieces around Russell Wilson and this offense that all matter just as much as terms of playing better and being more consistent. Everyone could talk about Nathaniel Hackett. Everyone could talk about Russell Wilson, but there are other pieces as well. So, Let's start off with the offensive line. It could be an entirely different unit for the most part than what Denver's been used to. Obviously, we know Graham Glasgow will be the center more than likely going forward until Lloyd Cushenberry returns from his injury. And even when he's ready to play, will the Broncos coaching staff go back to him if Graham Glasgow is playing efficient football? That is a question monster. Billy Turner is going to be at the right tackle position. Quinn Miner is at right guard. But really, there's a question. The Broncos did not trade Dalton Reisner at the NFL trade deadline, keeping him at left guard. Will Calvin Anderson stay at left tackle? Thought he had a pretty good game against the Jaguars. I think he's earned that there. But, Sarah, there's another Broncos offensive lineman that was just recently activated that could maybe add a little bit of a wrinkle and give the Broncos some flexibility on the offensive line where they're just simply banged up. Right. I mean, Tom Compton, who's coming off the back injury, he could play a role. And I think over those last two games, since that debacle on Monday Night Football against the Los Angeles Chargers, where I think – I mean, that was maybe the worst we've seen the offensive line play this whole season in terms of pass protection. In the following two games, though, I think the Broncos pass pro has been much, much better. It seems like they're doing a little bit better in the running game as well, especially late in the game against the Jacksonville Jaguars, Cody. We started to see them kind of impose their will a little bit there on that game-winning drive where Latavius Murray and, and the running game that was working so well. So... Really, to me, the offensive line is going to be key going forward because that was an area that I felt like Russell Wilson just didn't feel like he could quite trust the protection. 
And that was where we saw him missing open receivers or where we saw him locking in on certain receivers. I don't believe, I refuse to believe that Russell Wilson can't read the field, Cody. I think that the problem to me is that he wasn't trusting the offensive line. Can that change going forward? Is the protection going to be better? Is Russell going to feel more comfortable? We know that he's used to playing a lot of his career with a poor offensive line, but really it just seems like it kind of took a drastic turn with his trust for that unit after getting hit a bunch of times and really suffering a couple injuries, right? So to me, this is the thing. The, the offensive line has to be better in communication. They have to be better at picking up those pressure looks, and Russell has to help them out as well. And I think in, in, you know, another thing to that, right, you mentioned the offensive line. You mentioned it a little bit, just what they did late in the Jacksonville game, being able to run the ball effectively. Here's the question. Right now the Broncos have five running backs on their active roster is that going to impact the way that you do things, right? Because I feel like at this point, if you're inserting brand new guys into the rotation just to see if they can do anything, that could mess with some of that chemistry. I think that we've seen some good things. Melvin Gordon's played good football recently. He's protected the football. He and Latavius Murray seem like the one-two punch that the Broncos just need to rely on. And then if you want to sprinkle in a third guy, I think that's perfectly fine. But I don't think it should come at the cost of you know, sacrificing the reps that those guys that are already well ingrained in this offense already have, unless you know for certain a guy like Chase Edmonds can add something that you don't have to the running backfield or to the offense, then I think you can make a really good argument. But they need to have a running back, a rushing identity going forward if they're going to be balanced. They do, and they also need to have balance in terms of getting their receivers involved, spreading that production out. Cortland Sutton, can he bounce back after a rough finish to the first half of the season and become that wide receiver one? Could we see more K.J. Hamler, who started to really get things going against Jacksonville, who's made some big plays this season, but Cody, he's only got nine touches the whole year. That just that simply can't stay that way. Jerry Judy, can you get him and Russ on the same page? Because Judy has had, I mean, I would say a breakout couple of games here, really proving that he might be able to be a more high volume target in the passing game and maybe should be. So I think you got to spread out this production in the passing game and Russ has got to just trust his guys. It's, it's going to come over time, I think, but I, I think the clock has, has been ticking. The sand timers almost run out of, of sand. It, it's got to be there in the second half. They have to hit the ground running. I agree with you 110%. And I think another area I can throw out in terms of wide receivers, I feel like the blocking has to be better, has to be more consistent from them when it is a run play or if they're trying to get the screen game going. I mean, we've seen Jerry Judy blown up on screen plays. We've seen Montreal Washington blown up on screen plays. There has to be a little bit more of a concerted effort there. Cortland struggled, I think, with blocking this year. And I think this is where you really look back in hindsight. The Broncos do miss Tim Patrick. He was the best blocking wide receiver on the roster, and he was just constantly getting his hands dirty. But I will say, right now, the best blocking receiver on the Broncos, K.J. Hamler. Despite him only having nine touches, he's been a catalyst for springing open some big plays. Jerry Judy's end-around touchdown. I mean, they call it a touchdown pass by Russ to Jerry, but the end-around by Jerry Judy there. And also, early on in the season against the Indianapolis Colts, I mean, K.J. Hamler sprung open and just blasted a Colts linebacker to spring Melvin Gordon up for a big-time run in that fourth quarter. The other stuff in the offense really got in the way of that. But, I mean, K.J.'s, despite how undersized he is at the position... He's their best blocker, and I think this says something. Like That's got to challenge the other guys in that room to step up, and we'll see if that's going to be the case here in the second half for this Broncos football team. Broncos country, we are eager for your thoughts. What do you want to see the Broncos offense do better? What do you believe they must do better in the second half of the season? But coming up here in just a moment, Sarah and I, we're going to dive into the defense. How can the defense be consistent in a few areas of concern that will allow them to stay elite as they face some tough opponents down the stretch here for this Broncos team. We'll dive into that coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, let me tell you about BetOnline.net, the sponsor of today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. BetOnline.net is your number one source for betting football and the start of the new basketball season. You can find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth analysis on every single game. And as always, BetOnline remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport that's out there. They're the fastest and the easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including the MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts.
The Denver Broncos defense has been elite so far this season. They've had several holes, though, that they need to address if they want to maintain that and make a stretch run, especially against some tough opponents like Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Justin Herbert, Derek Carr, Matthew Stafford, and Kyler Murray. A tough test for this Broncos defense and some formidable opponents. Thank you so much, Broncos Country, for tuning in and making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day, free and available everywhere you get your podcast in audio format or whether you're watching on YouTube. Sarah and I, we appreciate you so much, Broncos Country, for tuning in. All right, I mean, Sarah, we've highlighted, we've raved about, we've hyped up the Broncos defense since training camp. They've lived up to the footing so far. However, they've had some various moments of inconsistencies, and in particular in one area that most Broncos fans are rightfully concerned about. That is run defense. In your opinion, what do the Broncos have to do better in order to be more efficient against the run here, especially when they're going to start off the season against two really good guys back-to-back, Derrick Henry, who just a couple weeks ago is coming off of a 200-yard performance, and then Josh Jacobs, who really got his career, his season, started essentially here in 2022 against the Denver Broncos with a big-time game. Yeah, the, I mean, you certainly don't want to be that team that everyone goes up against thinking, man, our running back could really get right in this game, you know, or our running game could really get going against this team. The Broncos have to be the aggressors at the line of scrimmage defensively. Guys like Mike Purcell, Draymond Jones, uh, you know, Deshaun Williams, Matt Henningsen, even who's getting in the rotation now, Cody. It's great to see that as well. And obviously DJ Jones, you can't forget about arguably the Broncos best run stuffing defensive lineman. They have to dominate the line of scrimmage and that that's multifaceted, right? Because if you dominate the line of scrimmage and if you can establish yourself as the aggressor against the run, it puts teams in long down and distance situations. And I feel like I say this every single crossover episode <laughs> that, that puts the Broncos in their position of strength, right? It, it gives them the opportunity to play their unique coverages and, and, you know, blitz the quarterback and get after off the edge. Th- they do all those things so well already. It's just a matter of, well, if it's second and four or if it's third and three, you're not really in a very favorable situation defensively. You want to keep them in third and five plus and really allow your defense to play to its strength. That Cody is why I think the Broncos, that's what they, that's what they have to do. I mean, it's, it's not necessarily a, how do they do it? I guess I, I guess I don't know. You just got to go ahead and do it. Be the aggressor, win at the line of scrimmage, dominate up front, just assert your dominance. There's that SpongeBob episode where Plankton's like, be more assertive, and SpongeBob's <laughs> trying to figure it all out. That's what the Broncos need to do. And, and I mean, you can't just say it. You got to actually go out there and do it. But they have the guys up front, Cody. I think that's going to be key in the second half. Actions speak louder than words, and that's what the Bronco. That's what Broncos fans want to see. They want to see the actions. Right? They can hear it in the press conferences. You and I, we talk about it, right? But it's not like we can do anything about it. We just highlight what they should do, what they need to fix, and things like that. So I think that's an important perspective to kind of point out there. You just need to do what other teams have been doing to you, right? Because other teams have been shutting down the Broncos on first down and then all of a sudden forcing them to pass. And it's played in the hands of opposing defenses very, very well this season. We'll see if the Broncos' defense can flip the script there. But I want to throw something interesting out here at you, right? When we look at leading tackler on this team, Alex Singleton, Josie Jewell's healthy, Singleton's healthy, Jonas Griffith is healthy. If you're a Giro Evro, I mean, how do you get your leading tackler, and I think, honestly, I think the Broncos defense is better when Alex Singleton is on the field. How do you get Alex Singleton on the field if Josie Jewell is healthy? I mean, that is a huge question. We did see some instances against Jacksonville where both guys were on the field at the same time together, but you have guys there. I mean, is this a, a way that Giro ever can maybe preserve, you know, maybe the, the fatigue factor at the position by inserting and rotating these guys in? In your opinion, how do you get Alex Singleton on the field more? Well, I wonder if a specifically, specifically, excuse me, against the Titans, Cody, depending if how much they come out in 12 personnel, you can't help but wonder, will the Broncos put three linebackers on the field at a time? Because obviously you got, you know, Josie Jewell and Jonas Griffith, the two guys that were your starters coming into the season, but Alex Singleton's played himself into a role no matter what. So I think at the very least, man, you've got to look at splitting snaps. I I don't know that that's necessarily a bad thing considering Josie Jewell and Jonas Griffith both have had some injuries this season. I think you could easily justify rotating Alex Singleton into the mix that way. 
but obviously you also want to make sure the guy with the green dot is is out there at all times. So is that going to be Josie Jewell? And if it is, you can't necessarily just swap him in and out of the field. Um, I, I mean, I don't know. I guess I don't know how much they're really wanting to go down that rabbit hole, but that is something that I think we should be watching for in this game against the Titans. And it could really play into that whole factor of really stopping the run and making sure that the Broncos are able to do that. You put those three guys out on the field at the same time and you know the Titans are going to run the ball. That would be very, very interesting to see. That could be, uh, you know, that, you know, grounds for like a, you know, 19 to 13 type of football (laughs) game out there. More of like a Big Ten game than anything else. But it would certainly be cool to see from just a, a, you know, football fan perspective of seeing how could the Broncos deploy and utilize all of those linebackers because they're athletic, they're instinctive. They're hard hitting. They play the run as well as they play. You know, they come up and they bust up screen passes and they're just knifing through the line of scrimmage. They blitz really well. So you've got to find a way to get them all on the field. I don't think there's any question about it, but it comes at the expense of something. So it's going to be matching up against specific teams in specific situations. But I think Alex Singleton has earned the ability to rotate in at least at 50, you know, 50 plus percent of the defensive snaps. I think another thing Broncos fans are looking at is, you know, what is the edge rusher rotation going to look like post Bradley Chubb? We've talked about it. Nick Benito, the rookie, is going to have a little bit more of an elevated status alongside Jonathan Cooper, Jacob Martin, who was acquired via trade by the Broncos. And, hey, you know, we'll see if Baron Browning will be ready to go against the Titans. And we knew Randy Gregory is going to take a little bit more time in order to come back. But maybe you get him, let's say you win these next three games, you you get him back for that Chiefs game. I mean, that's huge for the Broncos at that point. And all of a sudden, things might be a little different if Denver's at 6-5 and five going into that stretch where they do face the Kansas City Chiefs at that juncture there, though. So, Broncos country, what do you want to see the Broncos defense do a little bit more of? How concerned are you about the run defense? Do you feel like it's something that Ejiro Evero and his staff will correct with some tough opponents coming up here? Let us know in the comment section down below on YouTube. If you're watching there, tweet us on Twitter at Cody Rourke NFL, at Sarah Benninger, at Lockdown Broncos, if you're listening on your favorite audio podcasting platform. But that'll wrap up today's episode. Lockdown Broncos here on your favorite audio podcasting platform. Thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country for tuning in. If you're a first time listener or first time watcher and you like this show make sure you hit that subscribe or that follow button so you never miss out on a day's worth of Denver Broncos news content coverage every single day all year long we got you covered here lockdown Broncos